Hello, hello, and welcome back to the show. Have you ever felt stuck or lost? Maybe you feel like you've lost your drive. Maybe you feel overwhelmed. You just feel like you just keep pressing that snooze button in the morning and you don't pop out of bed before your alarm clock. I know I certainly have, and I have got tips and tricks up my sleeve that I do to get back into a rhythm, get back into enjoying my days, get back into feeling purpose-driven. And there has been periods of my life where it's maybe a day or two that I'm out of it, but then there's been really hard times, like a season that feels so long and it's it's treacherous. And so we're going to dive into this today. I'm here with my husband, Jake. And Jake, I want to know your tips and tricks for when you feel lost or stuck in life. Yeah. Well, I'll add in this right now that we all feel this. I feel this. We felt this literally this week, last week, like there's always recalibration, right? And so uh, I'm excited to dive into this because there are ways to get out of it, but I do believe this isn't one of the tips. It's just kind of like the tip before the tip. I do believe it's important to just know and understand that if you're feeling this, you're not broken. Like you're not broken. You're not, you're not a failure. We, we have this expectation as, as go-getters, aspiring crushers of, of what we're doing overachievers to think that every day has to be perfect or else something's wrong. And guess what? We're human. And the less that we can have on days that are not of your absolute best, the better, but there will be days. Every single leader that we admire, that we see on social media or they're on stage or whatnot, you better believe they have days like this too. So we're here to help you get out of that. But I believe it was just important to share that. So, yeah. That is, I'm so glad you said that because sometimes when you're not feeling your best or you feel bogged down or you're in a funk, there is so much shame attached to it. And almost just like you feel bad, you feel, and, 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 and then that's just a downward spiral. So I'm, I'm, I'm really so glad that you shared that. And something I've had to remind myself of is that my self-worth and my worthiness is not predicated on what I do and how much I get done. God loves me and loves you no matter what. And it's, again, it's not predicated on your achievements in life. And so I've, I've really learned that as I've grown closer to God, because before I would just feel like a pile, you know, yeah. and, and I still don't feel great about myself, but it's just really important to know that. And so What's one of the things that you do when you feel like you're stuck? Well, the first thing to now go into the first tip is you have to know where you currently stand. You got to find the rock of where you are. And what happens, and this this was for me last week, is it's almost halfway through the year. We all, I'm assuming, set some sort of goals January 1st, as we all do. And you then get into this constant whirlwind of all these great things, blessings, problems, situations. You might be in a a fiery situation. You might be dealing with hate or rejection, or um, you're growing so much that you're actually losing a lot of the things that were your past. So there's, there's a lot of resistance. And so what I found, and the first thing that I want to really drill in is you have to identify the rock you stand on. Where are you currently at? Because for me, if I didn't do this last week, I'd feel like, what the heck are we doing? Like, we've had this conversation. I'm like, what, like, like, are we like, we're not close enough to where we're going. We got to get this going. We got to get that going. And it's, it's looking at the, the model of the gap versus the game. And when you don't have awareness where you are, the thing that we always usually look at is the gap, the thing we're missing. We should be at this amount. Our podcast should be doing this. Our mentorship, we have this event. Like, like you're always going to look at the gap. And so what I had to do, and I would recommend is realize how much you've done and how far you've come, whether it's from January 1st, maybe if it's a, maybe from last month, maybe from last week, whatever that is. And so what I did is I, I literally looked at all the wins and compared to where my life was January 1st to where I'm at now. And you might be like, oh, well, Jake, actually my life's worse. Well, 
find the blessings because not every part, maybe business is not doing as well, but there's other blessings. So I'm looking at that. I'm like, man, we, we didn't even have this idea for this event coming up, man. We didn't even have our, our challenges. And now we are, uh, Emily and I, we just got married from January 1st, you know, two months before, and you know, we're still figuring things out and holy crap, there was actually so many blessings. And I feel, I feel grateful that we have this momentum. We have this show. We, we didn't have our show yet. We didn't have all these things. And so it, it brought me to an awareness of like, I'm on the right path. And I know that's so subtle yet also maybe just kind of esoteric thinking, but that brought me to realize that I'm not standing on sand. I'm not slipping through and it's only a matter of time before I'm, I'm about to fall through. I actually have a foundation I'm sitting on that brought me into a place of saying, I've come a great long way. And if you want, and if you're like, well, January 1st, nothing really changed, then go back one year or two years. If I couldn't find anything, then I'd be like, well, let me go back to 2019 when I've never spoken on one stage before. And I now from a few years from now, I'm now on speaking on stages all over the world. Wow. What a progress that I've had. I feel so good where I'm at. Am I where I want to be? No. But if you're only thinking about what you're missing out on and, and looking at other people, because I could look at other people, well, they got bigger events than us. They got more stages they're on. When I get to that point, I'm only going to look at people that are doing even bigger and I will never feel enough. And that is a huge first step to getting back into your own power. And it really, and I share this because this was for me and you know, this firsthand, I'm like, I like we, there was fluster moments. There was like, uh, we're not doing it as fast. We shouldn't be doing it. But I realized how far I've come. And when you realize how far you've come, it brings gratitude. It brings confidence, right? The, the big thing is confidence. If you're lacking confidence right now, it's because you haven't really taken roll call of how many awesome things you've done to this date. How you build confidence, one of the fastest ways is by compiling previous evidence of what you've done from a certain point and using that as evidence to then compel you and project you into the future. I might be thinking I am not doing great enough things. I don't know if I could get on more stages. I don't know if we can impact more lives. I don't know if this, this business venture is going to go through. That's uncertainty. I need to find certainty by looking back and be like, wait, I, I, I've done this. I've, I've spoken on stage. We spoke in Poland. I'm, I'm now married to the love of my life where there was a point where I didn't like, so I, I, I share that and I would love to hear your insights because if you right now are listening and, and you felt what I felt, know that one, that's okay. But two, you have to do a, a, a roll call of all the things that you've actually done that are great and count that because here's the last thing I'll say on this M. What you focus on expands. If I'm only focusing on what I'm missing on, it becomes magnified in my face and I feel like I'm a failure. Because what's right is always there and what's wrong is always there. What's positive is always there and what's negative is always there. And even in a position of where you and I are, it is so easy to focus on the negative and feel like we're failures, even though other people can say we're doing great things. So you have to focus on and find what is that foundation you're standing on and realize, you know what? I am in a beautiful place right now. It could be better and it will be better. But right now I feel amazing. So good. So, so good. I was literally going to say what you focus on expands and what you focus on you find every time. And I'm willing to bet any, every single, I know you listening to this right now, there is so much to be grateful for if you focus on the growth. In fact, I was talking to a potential client actually just this morning and, you know, instead of her being like, I got out of this she was, she's like, I got all this horrible relationship and I'm a single mom and I have a baby. And if I could feel it, she felt so much shame. You know, what I was focused on with her is you had took the courage to get out of a horrible, toxic relationship that would have impacted your daughter growing up. And wow, like, look at what you've done. You made a way, you got out of a horrible situation that was crushing your soul and your ego and all of it from from a mind perspective. And so listening to this, you might might be business, it might be life, it might be every, it probably is a multiple things, but taking that inventory, you're like, dang, I have so much to be grateful for. So I love that. Take inventory, number one. Number two, when I feel 
stuck or when I feel lost, what I do, and this is why knowing yourself is so important, I know that I need to be alone for a little bit and I need to do something that is going to spark joy and get me back into a dreaming state again. Because oftentimes when I feel lost, I stop dreaming. I stop, stop visualizing. I, I stop just imagining possibilities. I go into a completely different state of feeling lost and all the negative emotions. And so for me, what it looks like, I, I want to take time to maybe go to a Pilates class and then I go find a really unique coffee shop and I just go spend time by myself and do something that inspires me. And I, I do something that kind of gets me back into that dreamer state again. I watch a movie that makes me cry my eyes out or inspires me. Greatest Showman is a good one. Um, something like that that's going to put me back into that like dreaming state. I go find somebody on YouTube that I know that is aligned with my values that I can go watch and it's going to fire me up. And I mean, even I when when I was in a funk last week for a day, I even texted you and I was like, hey, I need a I need a podcast right now that's going to fire me up. Remember when I texted you that when I was mm -hmm. walking you go yeah. up? Uh, you know, not just just a, a a talking one, but I needed one that was like straight, like gasoline, like yeah. give, you know, put it. <laughs> give her that gas. Yeah, and so I'll I'll do I'll do that. I'll maybe um, even go on a long walk, and it just re it resets me, you know. Yeah. So finding those little things that fire me up again, it 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 may be even be. Uh, calling one of my girlfriends that lives in LA that is a huge streamer. She's created a life through perseverance, imagination in the entertainment world. Uh, she followed her dreams. She really did. And so sometimes when I feel lost, I just need to be around one person that thinks bigger, that is walking out their dreams and just being in that environment. You mean, you mean I'm not thinking big enough? It's it's not that it's it's you are thinking big enough, but I need to be around another woman. That's right. You know, and so I can't be your girlfriend, yeah, your husband, yeah. your business partner. You can't be all the things. And <laughs> it it is true. Like that's when you know I'll you know my good friend Brooke. I'll 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 reconnect with her and be like, what are you doing? Let's yeah. you know and. You know, or just get on a quick phone call, even if we don't have the bandwidth to like hang out, and it just re fires me up. And so, what are the one of those things for you? And and I'll specifically go look on Netflix. Like, what is the movie? What is the thing? And and even you know, we we saw a movie last weekend that everyone needs to see. Oh yes. But I knew, okay, because last week, if you hear me, I was in a funk. So I, what did I do? I went and sourced out all the movies and I'm like, junk, 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 junk. Oh yeah, this unsung hero movie. I was like, this is going to reignite a spark in my heart that I need. And so I saw when it was playing so and good. and then I go to Jake and I'm like, hey, let's go out, let's go to this movie on date night. And he was like, questionable. I was like, what, what, what is this movie? In Emily We Trust. And I'm like, hey, it's my turn, right? That's good. That's that's good branding, by the way. Yeah. I know she's she's pretty spot on. I could trust her on movie recommendations. Yeah. But that movie actually, it was it was beyond expectations. And not to just make this all about this movie, but here's the thing. Sometimes in the least expectations, whether it's listening to a podcast or watching that movie, it could speak to you in the most profound ways. And so you recommended this movie. And, you know, of course, I want a date night. I, I know when Emily needs a movie, it needs to be moving, emotional, have purpose, right? I she, want all she's the not, feels. she's not, I'm one of you rocked. She's not a Marvel action hero movie. I, I like, I love action heroes maybe because I get inspired by the hero idea and all that. So it's very particular to find a movie that we watch together. But I want to cry. I want to feel, I want to feel something. So it makes me happy when I see her having these emotions during a movie. 
But we go watch this movie and I was like trying to hold back tears. And I know 10 minutes and I'm bawling. And I'm over here trying to, you know, not just, I, I felt, I felt that tension of just like, holy crap, I could just let these emotions out too. And I didn't want to do that and all that, but I did tear up. And what was so powerful about this movie is it spoke to me in ways I didn't know I needed to be spoke at. It was so powerful on just showing the dynamic of a family and the struggles and you know, this movie in particular really showed that they had everything and then they lost it and they had to find a new way. And it just, it, 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 it brought comfort without me even expecting it to, but it also inspired. Mm. And I think something, so one, you should go watch that movie on Sung Hero, beautiful message, beautiful, beautiful message. You're going to love it. Both men and women are going to love it. Mm. But I think something for you, Emily, what, what you need, and maybe, maybe you listening can relate with this is Emily needs to get out of the normal environment, the box that she puts herself, even though it's a big box already, to then think literally outside the box. That is something that ignites you. And so when you say, I need to go to the coffee shop or I need to go be somewhere, be this. I, I, I can do a hotel even. I'm fine with that because I know that's how you get charged. Mm -hmm. So I look at it, my friend, I look at it as like I have a little toolbox and when I'm in the Funkville, USA, and I'm like, I got to get out of here, I go into my little toolbox and I'm like, okay, what do I need right now? And again, it might be completely changing my environment. Typically, it is changing my environment. And I need to go get re-inspired. I need to go to a Cirque show. I, need, I like the arts as well. I need to go to a museum. I need to go listen to people sing. I need to go into a completely different environment. My point of this is, it's like we all have a toolbox and you have to identify what is it that that speaks to your heart, speaks to your soul, gets you inspired and you need to, you need to act fast and go into that toolbox. And that's what I did with Jake and I knew what I was doing because I knew what this movie was about because I've listened uh, to... Uh, I've listened to Rebecca St. James, which is, the movie's about, you know, her her come up since I was a young girl. She's a Christian artist. And I knew what the movie was about. And so I went into my little arsenal and you didn't really know what I was doing, but I knew what I was doing. And I'm like, I need to be inspired. We both do. And so we went to that movie. And so, again, it's being conscious of it and then going into your toolbox and pulling it out and then honoring yourself enough to go do what you need to do to get set yeah that's that's it's profound and and the way i resonate i know emily resonated too is when i was watching that movie it was almost a testimony of hey if that happened to them and here they are majorly successful then it brought that comfort of like you know what it's okay i'm going through a tough time or i could struggle through this because i'm going to be better and maybe that's this podcast for you right now maybe this is the episode is you feel like, you know what, you're in that moment, you just hearing Emily and Jake talk about this, that can be that comfort, but also to give you the inspiration, the action to keep moving forward with the tips we provide. Yeah. So yeah, go watch Unsung Hero. That was really, yeah. really powerful. Yes. Yes. You must watch it. Awesome. Okay. So we got number one, you got to, you got to see where you're standing on that rock, that foundation, get grateful for where you are and you find gratitude by seeing all the wins and focus on the wins. Second, is you being able to get outside the box, get creative, change your environment. Environment is key. Even if you live in a beautiful place, sometimes you just need a little bit of different stimulation. You receive different ideas. The third here that I wanted to add is, it actually comes from our our scripture verse that that we've built our company on. You know, fortitude comes from this idea of never being shaken. And Psalms sixty-two five the six. To add a little context in this, this is uh, King David who is writing his thoughts. He's like, like modern day, he's journaling all his things. You know, you hear journal your thoughts morning and night. This is what Psalms is. King David is literally writing out his thoughts. So you see Psalms of him feeling triumphant, Psalms of him feeling sad, Psalms of him wondering what to do. Well, Psalm 62 5 is a moment where he is actually dealing with the probably one of the biggest betrayals in his life. Uh, there's speculation that it's probably his son, Absalom that um, literally betrayed him for, for a variety of reasons. And so he's in this moment as a king on the top of one of the most known in the world at the time with the most success, and he is literally feeling persecuted and attacked, and he is writing out his thoughts. 
and his feelings. And you can feel the heartache on this. And so as he's writing it in Psalm 62, 5, 6, he's saying, For God alone, O my soul, wait in silence. For my hope is from him. He is only my rock and my salvation, my fortress. I shall not be shaken. And what I wanted to really highlight when I was really meditating on this and what this can mean for you listening is this declaration he makes at the end, which is saying, I shall not be shaken. And if a king is feeling these thoughts and these emotions, what different is it for us to feel that and know that one, we're not perfect, like I shared in the beginning of this, but to you have to start to declare what you want. So in the beginning, I talked about what you've done and be grateful for that, but you have to start declaring and not being a reactive. You have to be proactive. And David in that moment where he says, I shall not be shaken, he's saying that Nothing's changing in that current moment. He's still going through these emotions, but he's having to start to profess at the end of that verse saying, I should not be shaken. Everything moving forward is going to be, it's going to be rough. It's going to be great, but I'm not going to waver because I know where my rock is. I know where my foundation is. And what's so interesting is that the moment you start to profess this and proclaim this, it's like when I started to do declarations back in my early years of entrepreneurship, and I would say, you know, I choose to step on stages all the world. I choose to impact millions of lives and I choose to be joyful every single day. I was professing what I wanted, even though maybe I didn't fully have that yet. Mm -hmm. And I believe for you listening, you need to start learning how to profess and declare what you want, not hope what you want. You declare it and declare it as you putting yourself in the future and saying, this is who I am. He's saying, I'm not going to be shaken no matter what happens and make that your current moment now. And what's interesting about this is a few verses before, as he's journaling this out, he almost wrote the same thing, but you could see that he built confidence through just writing things out. Because a few verses before he said, I shall not be greatly shaken. Now he's saying, I shall not be shaken. So you could see that he was, ah, well, maybe I could figure things out. I won't be greatly shaken, but now he's not going to be shaken. Yeah. And so what that means for you right now is you have to write out what are those declarations? What are you going to prophesy for your own future and make it a reality? You know, for me, it's, it's, it's realizing I choose, you know, if I'm feeling stressful most days, which there's been stressful days, we've had a lot of things going on, good, bad, all around, just the life overall. I have to start professing in my morning routine and start to say, I choose to find joy even if I don't know where I could find it. I choose to be abundant even though I could feel scarce right now. Like I, I'm literally doing that myself. Like I don't know if you know this or not, but I, I do this when I go hop in the pool. Like I, 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 I jump in our pool even though it's not that cold anymore. It's still pretty cold. It's a shock thing. But I sit there and I pray and I just, I every day I have to profess what I want my future to be like. Because if not, I'm going to be in a chaotic storm. Right. When I'm jumping on my trampoline, I'm visualizing the future. I'm not visualizing all the craziness and just constantly looking over the negative things because you will constantly be in that, right. right? What you focus on expands. And so for the point number three, I really wanted to drill in here is if even King David has to profess this for himself when he already has all the riches, success of the world, he still has to tell himself, I shall not be shaken. Then I think you can do that too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so good. And what I, oh my gosh, I just had this visualization of when I was living in Minneapolis, sleeping on a mattress on the floor. I will never forget it. I owned a house at the time and I had renters, a condo. And in Minnesota, there's ice dams and there's, you know, there's winter. And I remember my renters called me and they were like, there's water dripping through the ceiling into our house. Like you have to fix the roof. And I'm over here like, uh, I was like 24. I'm like, um, okay, be right back. And I like call my mom and I'm like, help me. And it's like, okay, we'll get someone over there for a quote. And I'm like, I don't even remember the price, but I just remember it being like a lot, right? And I'm like bawling. And then... I, you know, because I was in sales, I'm like, I need to go make calls today. Like, I'm not, I don't work a job where I get money for the hour. I need to make it happen. And I remember walking in my bathroom and I wrote out all my I am statements 
and I'm bawling. Like I have mascara like coming down my face. I'm doing that panic cry thing yeah. that I do sometimes when I get panic cry. It's deep. And I'm like reading them off and I, through all the mascara running and I'm like, I am wealthy. I am abundant. I am capable. I am a child of God. And, and it's like when you're sharing all this, it, like that visceral image yeah. came back to me from over a decade ago because it was fighting through the noise That's of right. my mind, the, of the enemy coming in, wanting to just crush me down, right? And it's like when you know, and again, it's it's almost like a tool in the toolbox, you can pull out those those declarations and profess what you are. That's right. That's how you build fortitude when you feel like you don't have any. And what you just shared then, you actually triggered um, a story I'm going to share too, because that's just where we go. We go on the phone. These tools are not just when things are good. They're not meant, they, they're, they, they amplify when it's good, but you have to do it when things don't feel good. When you are feeling stuck, we're sharing this because it hurts to do this because you feel like an imposter or maybe you don't, you feel like a fraud, but this is how you fortify yourself. And Emily, you sharing that is, is profound because you might not be here today. If you weren't constantly professing the things you want, you could have, you could have caved in. You could have gone to your old past. You could have stayed small. Like those are the things that help. Now there's many other things, but if, if, once again, if King David has to profess his future, even though he has all the things, then that should be a reminder that every day you have to profess your future. I will not be shaken. I will stand strong even when a turbulent. I will keep a, an abundant mindset even though I don't know where it's coming from yet. Like that's how you keep moving forward. And and it, your story brought back one of the toughest moments in my life. I I remember it was it was it was 2020 when the whole world shut down. I, my coaching business, I was doing consulting and coaching. It was going amazing. And I made a, a, a couple of huge personal investments in myself because I was basing it off the trajectory of my past. And I didn't know the world closing was going to happen as everyone didn't expect it either. And I remember it, it was shortly after the, the world shut down and I had all my income stop because no one was spending a single thing. And I'm over here now looking at my situation. I have a leaky bucket in my business because I had this big investment I was planning to pay off through the expenses I was planning for. And now every day I'm like thousands and thousands of dollars are just getting drained and I have no way to fill the bucket. And, and I met Emily at this time. And so I'm now in this amazing, beautiful relationship being built. And I'm over here internally feeling so just lost and and not knowing and i remember there was a moment it's probably two months after lockdown where it was just leaking by the day not seeing income come through trying to get creative but i am now feeling like king david i'm feeling like you i'm feeling so defeated and there was a moment where i was in my house and i i just questioned i was like do i go back to my do i have to go find a job like yeah. I've never worked. Like I used to be a nurse, but I've never worked a corporate job or hourly. And I was just like, do I, I need to make money. Is this where I go? And I, I've never thought that before. And it was the most defeating feeling, not anything towards people like that. But for me, I had a standard and I, 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 I was broken. And in that moment, I didn't know if I was going to get out of it. I honestly th thought this was it. Like I, like I know a lot of people could say that, but I really thought that was it. But in those moments as well, I was still doing the things to keep me moving forward. I'd still have my morning routine to keep me in a mental state because mental is everything. I remember still jumping on my little trampoline. I, know I guys, remember that too. You were running on the beach doing your incantation. I was doing whatever I can yeah. to declare and profess, even though I didn't know where the money was going to come from, even though where the opportunities come from, I had to fortify my mind and my spirit. And I would still do these 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 declarations on the trampoline while I'm breathing and priming my stakes. I knew if I'm in a good state and a good focus, then I could find opportunity. Because if I didn't do that, then I would just I would I would honestly just binge Netflix, eat my food, eat food, and try to comfort myself. And I I probably wouldn't be here. I would definitely yeah. not be with you. And 
here's a slight difference for you. And this is, this is how we roll. We're giving little tangents. When, when you can't believe yourself, when you're saying I am wealthy, because at that moment I wasn't wealthy. I felt inferior. I couldn't say I am wealthy because in the back of the, my, the head, my, my little voice would say, stop lying to yourself. You're a fool. Like you, you're like literally going in debt. Like what, what's going on? So I had to change it. I had to literally manipulate in a good way of saying, I choose to be wealthy. I choose to find ways to create abundance. I choose to, to, to get out of this funk and find new opportunities. And the moment you give yourself choice, you get power. So if you don't feel like you embody that abundant mindset yet, then start to say, I choose to be abundant because that voice will, will reason with you and, and basically be quiet because it knows that you can choose to do that. So every day I had to choose these things I'm saying out and it took, it took a while. It doesn't, things don't happen overnight, but what it did, and it brings me back to the good, the good book, um, written by Victor Frankel, um, uh, man's search for meeting mm. is that if Victor Frankel is in the Holocaust going day by day, not knowing if he's going to get killed or not, seeing the moment he gets picked up, he gets separated from his wife. And it just makes me like really emotional thinking about it because I, I remember hearing his, he's like the moment he got picked up and he got separated from his wife, he knew he was never going to see her again. And he didn't know till later, but she was killed on the first day. And he had to find ways to fortify his mind and his spirit. He had to, he, he threw his wedding ring away cause he didn't want to be reminded of it because he knew and he saw that those that lost a promising future are the ones that either just gave up, try to kill themselves. They had no purpose, but he had to find in that day-to-day -day moment, if he didn't know if he was going to go in the gas chamber or be killed or, or, or be just slaughtered, he had to find a purpose to just get him through that day, not knowing if he'd ever live or get out of that. He didn't know that the, the America was going to come and save them a few years later. How could you? Mm -hmm. But every day he had to just remind himself and fortify himself that, you know what, if I could survive this day, then there's another day to live after that. And he had a, he had an empowering future. And it's like David, David probably didn't know if he was going to live another day because of what he's going through, but he had to say, I shall not be shaken. And I felt like that and it correlated and I know it's completely different context, but his story of Victor, if Victor Frankl can go through that and overcome and now be one of the most profound writers to this day sharing that, I knew that if I could just fortify my day, it will get me out of it not knowing where it would go. And I just felt, I, I felt compelled to share that because you might not know what tomorrow holds. You might not know if you're ever going to get out of it, but I'll tell you what, the one thing you can control is today. Yeah. And fortifying your mind and declaring who you are and who you can be and putting yourself in that future moment of what you want to be is one of the most powerful things you can do. So powerful. I love that. Thank you for sharing. Yep. Oh my gosh, I love you and your big heart. So, so good. And you said something in the beginning when you're talking about declarations. It's like, really easy to do when you feel great, That's right. but it is really hard to do when you don't know where your next meal is going to come from or you're just so uncertain and that's where you have to develop the discipline to do it anyway and i watched you do that when we first started dating i'm like dude is running on the beach right now like and emily and didn't know these things she because i i didn't know how i didn't want to express we just met she's crushing and successful be like hey by the way and i'm over here having no, these just yeah pick. for real yeah but that that's that's the that's the harsh yeah. reality some people both men and women have to put on this outward yeah. appearance when right. when crap hits the fan in your business and you have to go meet a client and you have all these things happening in the back of your mind you have to still show up doesn't mean you hide it it doesn't mean you push those emotions away but you still brought me roses all the time uh, i knew what i could control <laughs> and they were they were $10 roses, for There's, <laughs> but they're but they the most beautiful roses. Yeah, honestly, they last so long. I got resourceful. Yeah. Oh, so so good. Well, the, the last tip I, I want to share when you're feeling lost, when you're feeling stuck, is to, like you shared, assess. But it's really to look at where are you operating, like your day-to-day, -day, because sometimes you feel lost because you're not operating in your zone of genius. 
you feel lost, you feel drained because you should hire someone to help you in an area of your life and you're operating like, let's give an example. For me, I'm not an email girl. I'm not the girl that sits at the desk all day. I'm a creative. I'm an innovator. I'm a visionary. I want to be meeting people, changing lives on stage, slaying. You know, that's my gifting. You may be listening to this and maybe your gifting is admin. You are really good at that stuff. I'm not. And so I start to feel bogged down when I'm operating and doing a lot of things that I'm not good at. It's not my gifting. And it can start to make me feel so overwhelmed. And then you're managing a house and there's this thing called life and we're like adults and we need to update our license and our passport. And, oh, you know, um, you got to like organize the garage and then find a dog sitter for you. You know, it's like adult things, right? It's (laughs) adulting. And there's so much to living and operating and especially if you're an entrepreneur and so sometimes you have to do something called the power of the pause and you pause and you go to the water you go to the river you go to the lake in my case I go to the Pacific Ocean and I reflect and look at my day-to-day and how am I operating and what things am I doing That is not my zone of genius. And then I have to feel the pain. I have to stir my own hurt of, you know, really realizing how long am I going to sit in that? How long am I going to keep complaining day in and day out? Oh, I have to do this and I have to do that. Or do I want to call a meeting, in my case, with my husband and say, listen, babe, this has got to change. I need to hire help here. Otherwise, I am going to end up burning out. I'm going to end up not operating in my zone. I'm going to end up losing my creativity. I'm going to end, you know, and so it's the power of the pause and then going, here's what needs to change. And then also looking at your life and going, what am I doing that can com- that needs to go? Where do I need to exercise the no muscle? Because you often feel lost because you've you've lost your way. It's like, you know, I'm from the great north. It's like being out there hunting and you don't have your compass on you and you forgot where you're going. And so you're just like up there looking at the stars, trying to find the Big Dipper, trying to find your way back home, right? And, and no, this is what happens when you're in the woods. You lose your way and we lose our way when we're swimming in a sea of overwhelm Mm -hmm. you lose your way when you're overwhelmed so it's pausing and going i gotta get my house in order literally and quite figuratively i need to get my house in order yeah and And a pro tip on on this too and this is something emily and i really applied in our own lives is we avoid using certain vernacular one of them is overwhelm it doesn't mean that you can experience symptoms of that, but what happens oftentimes is it's an easy cop out when you feel a little bit of stress, you start to say, I'm overwhelmed. And when you start to do that, you start to trigger these emotions and these feelings of that word, which is actually not true. Maybe it's, I feel stressed. I feel there's a lot going on. I feel distressed, confused, whatever it is. But the moment you start to use a word like that, we, we try to cut that out of our vocabulary. And Emily's been so great on, you want to add into that? I, I do, I, because what you're saying resonates deeply with me. So when I really, my success needle really started to change and I feel like, wow, I grew a lot in this department, I set a standard. So even though I'll still feel lost from time to time, I set a standard that I don't do overwhelm. So the minute that the circus music starts coming on and it starts to like cue the it's like rah, la, 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 la. then I go, my standard is I don't do overwhelm. So we better fix this ish right now and get this stuff tight and right. Cause right now we're cueing the circus music. So we what do we gotta do? We gotta go to the ocean and we gotta power of the pause and then we gotta we gotta fix this. And so it's a standard of living. 
And for me, my standard is I do not do overwhelm. I do not operate in overwhelm. That is not a state that I want to live in. And so, so we got to slay the dragon. That's right. And that, it's, it's a powerful thing uh, to really implement in your life. Maybe you use the word anxiety a lot. I feel, I feel anxious. I feel anxiety. Like, don't let that one word, because the word has so many emotions attached to it where you probably can find better words, right? Words are an expression of the internal things happening. That's literally what language is, what we're feeling inside. So just because you have a limited use of using anxious, angry, depressed, like don't let that be the way that you express things. So, cause, cause you might be feeling sad, but if you just keep using depressed, oh, I'm feeling depressed today. You're now going to embody all the standards of being depressed. And so something that Emily and I hold each other accountable to is the words we use, you know, anxiety, depressed. I, I never use the word depressed. And I, and I, and even if I feel really crappy that I just use the word crappy, I feel really stressed. I, I tell Emily, I feel burnt out today. I need a break, but I would never use the word depressed because the moment I start to train my brain to use that word, when life really does happen and something bad happens, I don't want that to be the first word that comes to mind because that is then the identity I live behind. Do you remember when you first started dating me? I would always use the word anxiety because I did suffer with anxiety. And I would say that too. I feel anxious. <laughs> it was the first word yeah. where maybe you could have used better words, right? Like it's it's not it's not repressing your feelings. It's just you didn't have a vehicle cool to better express it through language. So that would be the word. Like, If you think about it, we just talked about the power of your words and the power of your tongue and what you're speaking over your life. Declarations were speaking over our life. Right. So you're then going, I have anxiety. I feel anxiety. And so what I learned how to do, thanks to you, because you would always nip that in the butt straight away. You'd be like, and at first I honestly wanted to kick you because I was like, excuse me, you don't live, you don't feel what I feel. You don't get these panic attacks. Excuse me. And honestly, I was really kind of mad at you at first for that. I was just, I wanted to kick you, you know, but then I, and then I was like, okay, no, he's right. And then what I learned was, okay, I do, I am not anxiety. I don't have anxiety. I am healing. I am going to deal with it. So I started taking the disempowering statement and I started trading it with an empowering statement. And then a big bonus, which is more powerful than it all, is then I would ask Jesus, I would ask the Lord, I would say, hey, can you take, o take over for me? Take over, Lord. I asked for you to heal me, bless me right now. And I would start asking the Lord, will you help me with this? Because we're, we cannot do it alone. And th that's the whole problem is with self-development. We think we can do it by ourselves. Mm -hmm. And actually it's, it's, you know, Jesus development, like rely on him and not on your own understanding. And so that's where it really started to shift for me. And again, doesn't mean we don't have negative emotions. It's just, we call upon the Lord to heal us, to help us through those moments, to get us through and then we say, you know what? I need to take an Emily time out, all right, and go to the ocean. So we just gave you so many good tips. This was like super powerful. If you even want to go deeper with us and really learn how to never be shaken, Jake, we've got an amazing free event coming up. Why don't yeah. you share with them? Yeah, we got the four-day challenge, the never be shaken challenge. If, if you really resonate with everything we shared here, this is why we created this challenge. Because we understand it is halfway through the year. We understand just like how everything we just teached is what we practiced. And we are like, more people need this. People need to know where they're at currently. They need to understand how to refortify their foundations, how to never be shaken, how to silence the noise and the distractions. And so we have a step-by-step -step where it's every day we hone in and challenge you on this. If you've been part of our Create Content at Converge Challenge the past couple months, you know how powerful those challenges are. This is all about by the time you're done with this four-day challenge, it's in the title. You will never be shaken. You will feel so confident. You'll feel peace yet strength knowing that you can make this second half of 2024 your best and most empowering year. Business-wise, we're going to give you business ideas and tactics. Personal-wise, you're going to be refortified in that way. And so we created this four-day challenge absolutely free. Uh, we had um, over a thousand plus in our last challenge. We're, we're going to have an even bigger challenge. 
And what I love about this this challenge is one is there's no barrier to entrance. You just got to show up. You got to you got you do have to commit your time and energy, which we we don't take that lightly. Uh, but I think what you'll see in the in our our website and the details on this, you're going to see all these testimonials from our, our previous challenges. But what I love most about this is not only are you going to never be shaken, but you're going to be around other amazing humans that these relationships, these bonds, this community. It's honestly something I've never experienced before, the power of the community, to see it firsthand. I know a lot of people talk about community. A lot of people say, yeah, you got to, you know, get around other people. And then you go to these like events or groups and then the community's dead or it's takers and not givers. And I don't say this to just say it. I say it because of all the people have shared this. This community is something else. The people that come to these challenges, come to our mentorship programs, whatever it is, the people that attract, these are quality people. So if you've been feeling like you need to find a new friend group, a new business group, someone that you can find new ways to do business, maybe you're stuck and you need to get outside of your box. I remember that moment in 2020 when I was feeling those moments of despair, of feeling completely lost. One of the ways to get me out of that was what I shared. And then also other ways to continually be around other successful people that in that moment of 2020, their businesses were still successful or they were getting creative. I needed to absorb that like a sponge because it opened my mind because I'm here today because of that moment. Right. You wouldn't hear Jake on this this podcast right now. You wouldn't see Jake and Emily married. I know right now I would not be ma married to this amazing woman if I crumbled in that moment. But it's because I surrounded myself and got to these networking groups, even if it was virtual at that time, to see what they're doing, hear it. Just like that unsung hero movie, I saw someone else's testimonial and it inspired me to think bigger. That's what we're doing at this challenge. Yes. So join us. Where do they go to join us? So you go to neverbeshakenchallenge.com. It's in the, the links below. You'll see it below the podcast if you're watching YouTube here. And it's completely free. And all we ask is this, is that if you commit to this, it's only an hour each day. You commit to this, show up, play full out. Yes, there's recordings, but we expect you to be there live because you get to feel the electricity hundreds of other people there live. You're seeing and experiencing what their takeaways are. You're playing full out. And if you show up right now, I, I, I can guarantee you, you will feel refortified. You will feel, we're going to teach you how to build a fortress of protection around you. There's a very beautiful way of doing that. How to wait in silence, to trust, but also to silence the distractions. It's powerful. Mm -hmm. You need to know what to say no to. And we're going to go deep on that. And then lastly is really being able to declare that truth of where you're going to be. Because our promise, and I hope you feel this, is that you can make the second half of 2024 your best year ever. That's right. You might have had goals the first, January 1st. You might have fell off. Guess what? You don't need the whole year to make it the most successful. It only takes a couple pivotal moments and never be shaken challenge could be one of those. And so Emily and I are co-leading it. We're so excited. Yes, There'll be a few thousand are. of you there. And uh, you want to add anything else into that? I would say just sign up, commit to it. You have nothing to lose and everything to gain. And what's the website one more time? Never be shaken challenge. Never be shaken challenge dot com. Head there. And all in all, I really hope we hope that you loved this episode. Please share this yep. with a friend, maybe who's got the funky monkeys, maybe who's been feeling a little lost and go out there and encourage someone today. Share with us one takeaway from this episode. Tag us on Instagram at Jake Havron at It's Emily. And as always, please rate and review and subscribe to our YouTube channel, y'all. Right. We, we, we like having yeah. dinner with you when you're you're watching. Yes. You know, it's fun. You yes. know, some of you you might be needed to change up the diet a little bit. I've been seeing you eating some McDonald's. I'm just joking. Hey, we love having fun. We love seeing you take us this information in and uh, it's an honor and a privilege. And so we, if you found value, only if you found value today, yes. then, then we ask of those, those things, but yes. see you at the never be shaken challenge and God bless. God bless and see you in the next episode.